Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. We'll get this silage over to the BGA. I should be able to unload this 24,000. I think the BGA, um, the bin, holds approximately 50,000 litres if I remember correctly. Something like that. It might be 75, no, no, I'm sure it's 50. Absolutely positive that it is 50,000 litres that it holds. Now, I've got more than that in, uh, not more than that, i got more than 26,000 in there. I think we had like 30,000 something. So, we might have to wait a minute before we can put any more in. Don't want to fast forward time too much because uh, we've still got a load of planting and stuff to do. Although... Getting the grass planted, that's an easy thing to do. We, that, that won't be any problem whatsoever. We can easily get that grass planted. Getting uh, the potatoes planted, we've got to buy the potato planter to do that. That actually, again, won't be too much of a problem. It's when we come to harvest the potatoes that we could have a bit of an issue. We may be sort of up against it a little bit, trying to harvest them when we don't yet have the money. Although... It is, it's about 50, I said about 50,000 for everything. For the setup that I've described, we're only going to do a small area, sort of like a test piece really. And we will plant that small area and then we can harvest that small area as well. So even if we can't use the hired help for any of the harvesting, we're still going to be able to do it in at least a reasonable amount of time. Now we got got uh, 27,000 litres in there. So I should be able to get all of this in and then head home again. There's 1,000 litres potentially that we won't fit in here. That's all. Just 1,000 litres. I, I can live with that. Because um, we can actually leave that in the trailer and take it back with us. Load up the last remaining bit because there's definitely less. I think there's less than a trailer load back there. And it's actually only going to be 700 litres by the time we sort of finished with this. So I'll switch to the back trailer right there. It's, it's less than 700. It's Yeah, it's hardly going to be anything. Quite happy with that. Go up through. Helper B has completed their task. That will be something that the plow has reached a bit that we didn't really want it to reach. Uh, how much have you got left there with 480 and it's already dropped down by 50 liters so i'm just going to leave that one there for just a second let it finish doing what it's doing and we're going to have a look at you so that's the grass area there that's the bit that's left on the grass area so this bit right here i will bring the edge of my field out a bit further to to work that that there is going to be the potato planted area and then this up here is going to be other area so we'll start from here and we'll see if the tractor is actually able to go and do the rest of this bit along here i'm just going to press h actually wait don't press h yet uh and oh it's all the way back there all right turn this one over Ah, it's all the way out that far. Okay, so it's quite a bit of that is already field. Didn't realise that. Right, well, we'll let that one just carry on there. He'll probably stop again once he gets back up this end, but that's fine. We, we don't need to worry about that. So 480 litres there. I can now tip all of that out. So I didn't need to fast forward time at all. We can just dump that bit in there and then we can head back home and get the last of the silage done. So we won't get the money from the silage until midnight tonight, which is a little bit unfortunate that we got to wait for that money to come in. So, but we... At least we know we've got a chunk of income coming in. So if we can't afford everything we want, we will at least be able to get it tomorrow. Now, with the potato equipment, the small harvest we're going to do to start with, we won't. We don't have the money to go and buy all the harvest equipment, but we do have the money already to buy the planting equipment. So we can already get started on planting the field uh, once we've got the ploughing done. And 
I mean, yes, we should really cultivate it first as well, and we'll probably do that. And I've also got to decide how to mark out the field. I'm thinking that we will try and do a track up across. We did discuss whether or not we should do this previously, and I think we will. We will have a track up across the field, and that will go from our yard at the bottom, and right up across. So we're sort of cutting up across, and then uh, we, we sort of got a straight line to the BGA. However counter to that argument about having a track up across the field is we're now using the BGA silage clamp. We're not using the silage clamp back at our place. Once we've got the last of silage out of there, we're going to sell that silage clamp. What reason do we have for having a track go up across our land? I can think of none. I can't actually think of a reason to have that track anymore. Now that we've gotten rid of everything... Uh, down this side or well, once we have once we've gotten we, we've sold this and then we've sort of done the rest of it rattling around there it's quite strong this tractor really isn't it Getting up around that hill without any trouble like that uh let's take you to there and we'll just load this into the front trailer for now um yeah so once we've done where well, we've gotten rid of this why would we need a track going up across there for us to drive up through on a regular basis? Yes, we occasionally want to go and do some work for a farmer with the field up there. But that's not really worth sacrificing a chunk of our field in order to have a track to get up there a little bit faster. If we were still making the silage down here and we're running it up across, then yes, that would probably be worth the effort. But now I'm thinking, no, we don't really need that. So I think we'll leave having a track. I will keep it. I, I, I think I will make a mark so that we've got a, a separate field. I think that is something that we want to have, but not a, a full width track that goes up across. Um, I mean, it, it'll sort of be a track that will go across there anyway. Okay, let's just double check in here. That is zero. We've got absolutely no chaff left in here whatsoever. So that one is done. Now, this milling machine does have its uses so i'm gonna keep hold of it i am thinking that we might want to use this one for wood chips at some point maybe do some wood chipping um and then use this one to pick wood chips off the ground i mean i'm gonna want this one over at the bga anyway I won't put it there now. I'm going to put this one down here for a minute. It's just going to stay right there and probably clip into the ground. It causes all co courts of trouble, sorts of trouble. Uh, all sorts of trouble there, but uh, it's not really anything I need to worry about right now. So I've got... I'm going to take both... The I'll leave both the trailers hooked on. and We'll run them both. Uh, so we'll put you in like that. And we go and take this up the road. So I've got a seed drill and I've got a cultivator. I can do that bit. I don't need to go any ex I don't need to get any extra equipment to be able to finish doing what we're doing in the field. I do need to buy a potato planter at the moment. So we've got to make sure we got the money to get that one. So we'll buy that one now, or at least once we've gone and delivered this silage, and that one can just wait at the dealership ready for us to pick up. Once we've bought that one the money that we've got left over is then able to be used for um doing a bit of landscaping we'll get a big we we'll get another chunk of money overnight from selling all of this silage that we're delivering to the bga and there's more silage at the bga that we can go and move later and that's going to be a lot faster to move it across to sell it um, we're not going to need to worry about uh, like the long trip. And I'll probably just do that with one trailer. If we put the silage thing on the front, uh, the mill machine, sorry. We put that one on the front and we put the one trailer on the back. Um, we won't have any issues with that. We can quickly load it, back the trailer out and across and tip it out. And we can just keep doing that backwards and forwards. So it's very, very quick and easy uh, process to get the silage here at the BGA 
dumped. And then if we're making more silage, we don't need a track coming across our land in order to get up here. Because we'll be coming out of the grass field to deliver the stuff over here anyway. So it's not really going to be an issue. Now there's 4,600 in there. I need that to drop down to about 40 grand before we do any more. So I'm going to shut off the engine. I'm going to leave that one there for a second. We're going to go and have a look at this one. He's decided to stop there. This is the hill that he's decided that he is going to die on. Uh, quite know why you had to go to that particular hill, but there we go. That one is... I'm going to go across here. So I think there is not actually field, that bit that sticks out around there. You can see it's a slightly different color there. So it's actually quite a big area there. It sticks out quite a bit from that house. We're going to go up to it. What's it going to do then? It is going to turn around. I think we're just going to let that one carry on fussing there and uh, doing what it's doing. Uh, okay, I'm going to be here. So the next thing I want is I want to sell that silage clamp. I have no use for that silage clamp any longer. And that's money that we'll then be able to get back. It's only 7000 there. How much did we pay for it? Before we make the final decision, we're just going to make sure... We paid 15, so we get about half back. Um, there really isn't a need for keeping it at the moment. So I, I, I think that selling it is the right decision. So I'm going to sell that one, 7395. Yes, and that one's gone. Right. So yes, we spent quite a bit of money to put that one in the yard in the first place. But that I believe that was money well spent. We easily made that money back already on silage that we've gone and sold. And we only did one lot of silage in that clamp. But we've already made that back from stuff that we've sold. And we've got a whole load more basically in escrow at the BGA that we'll get at midnight. So there's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a whole load more coming in. Now we want to go with our potato technology and... We're going to get the potato planter. Now, the two potato planters we got, this is 500 litres only. So we're going to be doing a lot of refilling of this one. And this one here is 800 litres, which is a lot better. 800 litres is definitely way better. This one over here does require 150 horsepower to pull, which is, and that one's 170. I don't have the power to pull that one, and it's 20 grand. Whereas this one over, well, that one's actually nearly 20 grand there. This one here only requires, they both only require 60 horsepower. We'll go with the, we'll go with the smallest one. We'll go the, the 800 litre there. That's an extra 8,000 euros for 300 litres of capacity is all we're getting. Um, plus that 800 litres, I suspect 300 of that is fertiliser and 500 is potatoes like this one. Because if you have a look at them, they're actually essentially the same machine, just with an extension on it. So you've got the GL32E right there. This one is the GL32F. Uh, there isn't a lot of difference between them. You've got standard configuration planter. What? I don't. I don't understand. Now I'm just confused. A sower with a mechanical processing system can be used on ploughed surfaces. Ooh. So we don't need to wait for the cultivator. We can use it on ploughed surfaces. This one, exactly the same. Cedar, planter, you can sow fields. So this one here specifically states can be used on a ploughed surface. Right. Well, this is one that we want anyway. So we're going to buy that one. 10,800 euros like that and we're gonna need a lot of seed for this so we will buy the seed now make sure that we have got sufficient seed to load everything up so we're gonna want that one there there's one bag a second bag a third bag a fourth bag the reason I'm getting four bags is because we do also have to plant all of that up there 
Then I am also going to want something that we have previously owned, but then I sold because I wanted the money for other things and I wasn't really using it very much. I do regret selling that. We, um, I've wanted it, although I've just not really had um, solid reasoning for, want for keeping it. And it's that one. Fortunately, I've bought just enough seed to... Uh, not allow myself to purchase the thing, which is a little bit inconvenient. I could go with a trailer and we could load seed into that. Like this one here. It's not bad. It's 8,320 litres. We have a tractor bring that over and do the loading. Uh, back. This one does indeed hold seed in there. So we can do it like that. Possibly we can even um, load the seed into it with a shovel, which would be even better. This is one that goes on a front loader. We don't have a front loader to put it on, unfortunately. Uh, we don't really have any other options. So I'm actually thinking that that would be our better option. Although the, adva the distinct advantage with the seed runner is that we can put fertilizer in it as well. We put this four two 4,000 litre um, units on it, um, but it... You know, the downside is obviously it's 20,000 euros, whereas this one over here is only 8,590. We do have to pull that with a tr tractor, uh, but the, yeah. I think we'll go with that one. This one here does look good. Ooh, got all kind of color options on that. Configuration, green, orange. How is that an overloader? Oh, wow. Okay, wheel setup. Why is that in the overloader section? Seriously. Auger wagons, also known as chaser bins. I don't get why that one's in that section. It doesn't even have a, a an auger on it. This one does, though. So we go with you. We've got main color in here. What are we going to have? <gasps> Rim color. Yellow. Design color. What? No black. Main color has black. All right, we'll do it like that. We'll, we'll have black and yellow on there. Yes, yeah, see, that's a bright yellow, that is. Let's do that today. Let's let's go with the red on there. I don't know. That's a, the hardy kind of red, that is. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll, we'll go with that. So we've got design, standard. We've got some decal on the side there if we want it. There's the actual auger stuck out on the side. I love the way that this kind of looks like someone has jammed it onto the edge and used a sledgehammer in order to fit it in there. <laughs> it, it really does. That genuinely does look like someone has just sort of wedged an auger into the side and then used a great big sledgehammer and smash the tailgate down into place in order to make sure it fits uh, it, it, tell me it doesn't tell me that doesn't look like someone has used a sledgehammer to sort of fit part of that into place that's fantastic that really is uh michelin or default we'll go with default on there and we'll just go with standard on this one as well so that is 8590 to buy that one okay and i've already got some stuff at the store I can't pull it with this one. This one can stay parked right where he is. The tractor has gone and stopped again. Actually, he stopped because he's run out of field, which is good. Now, I've got the little bits of grass up there to do, but we're kind of getting closer to... You know what, actually? Because I still need... I've still got a whole load of extra work to do with the plow around the edges and stuff like that, so... What's going on here? There's, there's very little field in this bit. So I'll bring that one over there and we'll turn this over. It won't take long for the plough to actually finish this up, by the look of it. Drop you in there. Start you going across this bit. Yeah, see, it's, it's barely more than the tractor's width just there. It's coming up here. We've got the fence sticking out on that side. He's got, oh, I see. He's going all the way through. He stopped there and turning around now. Not quite sure what logic is going on here at the moment, but there's obviously some logic going on. 
Well, it does bug me a little bit, the, the shape of the field that we've got right here. I think, you know, let me go into landscaping, and we've got 11,000 euros left, so we're going to be doing a little bit of landscaping soon in a minute. Uh, soon in a minute. We, we, just soon. Um, yeah, it, it kind of bugs me that we've got all of this wiggling out everywhere. Okay, let's not go into landscaping. He's now gone and done that bit already. I'll bring you round, and I will about flip that one over there. About face, and drop him in here like this. That one's just going to go up there, and then it's going to start working up through this part of the field. Okay, I need to actually overlap it a little bit more there, because otherwise we're going to end up missing some bits. That's better. Feel it. So otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna miss some bits in there if I'm not careful. Right. So you go finish that, and we're gonna start doing a little bit of landscaping. So the first bit that I want to do with the landscaping is I was actually thinking that we could mark out a little bit on the field here. So this leg of the field is going to be where we're going to do our potatoes now that bit all the way around there isn't actually field it's not plowed out field i did originally think that i kind of wanted to get rid of that great big stone because then we've just got a lovely great big section down here that stone really does sort of spoil it a bit we can come in close to it though and we'll, we'll sort of work our way around it so what I was thinking first is that I do want to put something up through here that will separate the two fields. Now, if I switch to a square, I could get that and it will run in a square line next to the plowed edge on here. So we're going to switch over to ground type. Uh, what have we got? We've got stone. We've got that stone. We've got kind of mud. We've got the grass gravel another gravel pebbles mud that'd be a mud track that we go up across tiles and back to some mud that's just rock there and then more i don't want rock i think we'll use that because that's sort of a, a bit of a track really isn't it and then i will make that one go smaller and we're going to go up here Right, so I'm going to bring that across. Actually, I'm going to make that uh, a, a shade bigger like that, and it will just do this. So technically, I suppose I am already putting in a bit of a track here, just from putting this up through. And then I'm going to change that one over. I'm going to bring that down really small like that, because what I want to do is I want to get rid of that shrub there. That one shrub is going to really bug me if I don't get rid of it. And then there's another one over here I want to get rid of, which is probably not going to go with the plow. But that whole bit there is going to be overhanging the plowed area. And again, that's just going to irritate me big time. This we will plow up. So this line here that I've now gone and made, we will switch back to the square. We'll make that bigger. And I'm going to bring this line all the way down. It's going to mark the edge of our new potato field that we're going to have down here. So I don't know how much we're going to do in the way of potatoes down through here. I do know, however, that we want to keep the two fields separate. So this is to facilitate keeping those two fields separate. Bring it down a bit further, down to about there. Right. I don't really need to do any more than that. The main reason I'm not going to do any more than that is because I don't want to waste the money. Now, I could actually bring this up like this. I think that isn't going to be out of place to bring this up here. And it's this bit in here. Like that bit in there, I don't really think we need to put anything in there. Like the, the field could just come straight down across here like that, uh, somewhere like that. So we just have a straight line down through. We don't worry about that little bit in there. This bit in here, I probably won't take that out any further either. 
and we'll look at it over here so that tree i want to remove that tree because then we can bring this right the way across here there's a big area there. there's a lot of field there that we can go and get uh we want to change that to that shape and we also want to change to here like this and now what i also want to do is uh, control e and i want to bring that brush strength all the way up to maximum and i'll make that a little bit bigger as well okay so then what we want to be looking at i can bring the field out here so we want to get rid of that tree and that will allow us to do some work up there on the field this kind of comes up over there was a bit in oh that was further down so we don't need to get to the, we'll we'll get to that in a minute uh up along here I don't think there was very much that was excessively rough and out of the way on the field all the way around here. So I will remove that tree on the corner and that tree there. Plus that one and that one. So there's four trees that we've got marked. And that will allow us to bring that field out round. Uh, it's not too much. Was I, one thing I don't need to worry about is like it missing little bits with a combine because we're not planning to do arable crops in this field now one bit that we do need to correct is this dip in here now that stone is obviously a bit in the way and there is a bit of a dip there as well which was causing issues but that i want to straighten this up here and I, basically i want to bring all of that land up like that now that is costing me a bit of money i have got the money ticking away doing this but ultimately this is something that's going to be worth it so i'm going to bring that up i'm just going to bring, work right up to that hill up there now if we were doing this in real life obviously we wouldn't just be going over it with a computer uh, we would be out here with either a shovel and a pick doing this. This is actually something that I have done. Or we'd be here with a tractor with a cultivator on it, like a springtime cultivator, something like that. Uh, just dragging it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And then a front loader as well, maybe if there's any particularly rough areas and working it like that. So I have done things like that in the past. It's not something that is completely unusual and alien. So we want to just kind of like smooth that out a bit there. We've got some smoothing here to do. Uh, there's a few tree stumps in there. Like this, this whole area here we could actually do something with. I don't want to do too much more in there. We can always come back over and do some more of this later. Now there was some bits here somewhere. Oh, it was there. It was it was down through here with the plow. It was like quite a, a, a rough area in there. So I'm just gonna bring that through. We gotta obviously we're gonna have to plow that again. And then the same down around here on the edge of the field. Now this bit right here, it's quite a steep drop down over the edge of the bank here. So I'm going to do something about that. And we'll go up to those shrubs and we'll get rid of them. Bring this through. Uh, and I said in a previous one, in I think, didn't I say no landscape? It was something about landscaping, I'm sure, but uh, there's a tree stump there, I didn't realise. Uh, this one, I'm quite happy to do landscaping in the fields. We've got to pay for it. There's no, I think there's no free landscaping, I think was the, 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 the rule I said. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.